Good morning, Steve Free in Chicago with the morning grain comments. Well, the big news overnight is that Congress did vote to uh, get the government back to work and extend the debt ceiling at least until February. And so a lot of the markets are, are, are reacted to it with the dollar sharply lower and uh, we've got grains a little bit higher. Um, yesterday in the markets we saw some selling in the wheat and corn and some buying in the beans. I think some of that uh, is reflective of you know, so it's just some liquidation in the corn and wheat and um, on the uncertainty of what the government was going to do. And in the beans, we're seeing a little bit of a pickup in demand. Now, what does this mean for the grain market? Well, first of all, the head of NAS this morning said they will be meeting in a few minutes to talk about whether or not to release the October crop report. So we'll find that out today. We also have a backlog of data of export sales, inspections, and daily sales. We should get that. The market's anticipating that as much as 3 million tons of beans, a million and a half tons of corn, and 800,000 tons of meal may have been sold during the shutdown and not reported. So we'll see if we get that information either today or tomorrow. We also uh, would like to get some crop progress report, but with employees furloughed, we really don't know if they kept the data and we don't know if they'll start today and put a report out on Monday or release some of the back data. We would really like to see what the crop ratings have done over the last couple of weeks and where harvest progress is. So in general, what we got in the markets, we're feeling a little bit of firmer domestic basis. I think part of that has to do in the beans with increased demand, but also maybe a little bit of slowdown in farmer selling or not enough farmer selling to fill the pipeline. In the corn, we may not be seeing enough farmer selling and not enough harvest progress to, to actually firming up the basis, and that could put a little support underneath the, the market. I think that one of the things we'll be watching is maybe the, the meal spreads, like January meal versus July meal. We actually see January gain on, on July. The same thing could happen in the beans if we have this front-loaded demand. And we'll see if corn is uh, going to gain maybe on, on wheat. Yesterday we saw Kansas City wheat finally see a little bit of a break in, in the chink in that very positive armor. And some link that to the possibility that spring wheat, which we have plenty of, may be moving into the hard wheat channels for demand uh, as a blend. Uh, hard wheat uh, conditions and, and S&Ds and balance sheets are pretty tight because of export sales to Brazil. And uh, we'll see uh, if this offsets that. If Brazil comes back in and buys some more wheat due to problems in Argentina, uh, then we actually could see a Kansas City wheat uh, firm up again. So that's pretty uh, closely watched there. As far as weather is concerned, the two-week forecast in the United States is cool with precip a little bit below normal, which should help harvest progress. Brazil conditions are very favorable. Uh, Argentina is still dry, though, and so that's what we're going to have to watch Argentina pretty closely. So all in all, we're, we're back to work. We should get some positive export data that should help the grains. But the key is the crop report. And uh, whether we get it in October or November 8th, higher yields should actually offset the higher demand. The next key is whether or not the farmer is going to sell at these price levels. As always, these are my thoughts and not those of ADM, ADM Investor Services. And have a safe and profitable trading day.